All right, fight fans, please help me welcome your next fighter, Jesse Martinez, to the blue corner. And the first of two Martinez is making his way to the blue corner for the second time in the last two months. This is a rematch from our last card. One of the more controversial decisions we've had thus far. And now we get to see him run it back. And boy, am I excited for this one, Josh. Absolutely. This is going to be a war. You and I both got to talk to both Martinez's and both made the same statement. I want solidification. They're here to make the statement. They're here to set the example that there's nothing that's going to be controversial or put into question this time around. And it's so interesting because Jesse Martinez, not the split decision victory last time, said he wants to solidify and show everybody that the judges made the right decision. Yet in his heart, Danny Martinez truly believes he won that fight. So he wants to prove the judges Ladies wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, and he was correct. his opponent is... You of the right. Very, very exciting to see you. And two, just young, exciting fighters to the PFA. Yeah. I remember, too, when I was going back and looking at the interviews, Danny was talking a lot about volume. That he, In this one, he's going to put a lot more urgency on volume. That's where he felt that that's what slipped away in the last one. So he wants to get more action in. And, you know, obviously, amateur records never mean too much, but... Danny Martinez may be the most deceiving one in three fighter I've ever seen. He's lost a couple razor thin split decisions. Every time you see him in there, his boxing jumps off the you know jumps off the screen. You can tell he's so skilled. And at just 18 years old, he's got so much. Potential. Ladies and gentlemen, your 13th fight of the evening takes place in the super welterweight division as K1 rules and is scheduled for three two-minute rounds. In the blue corner. With an amateur record of one win and one loss. With an official weight of 149.1 pounds. Fighting out of Siege MMA in Peoria, Arizona. Introducing Jesse Martinez. His opponent fighting out of the red corner with an amateur record of one win and three losses. With an official weight of 147.3 pounds. Fighting out of Union Combat Academy in Mesa, Arizona. Presenting Danny Gordo Martinez. Danny versus Jesse, Martinez versus Martinez. We are set to go with our second edition of Danny Martinez versus Jesse Martinez here at PFA 6. And boy, do you guys have a good one coming your way. Absolutely, absolutely. And I liked how you said before, Danny's record is deceptive. He's going to be looking to make a statement on this one. And I'd be very curious to see if he gets the win, if he's going to call out Dwayne Mitchell to try to get that win back too. Good exchanges thus far here. Hallmark Ooh. of Danny Martinez's style, that strong right hand and tremendous head movement. Mm -hmm. See, Martinez that's the thing. To, Jesse, I should say, loves to throw kicks. Mm -hmm. Looks for him to get going with those combinations. Absolutely. And see, it's such a unique matchup because you could tell with Danny, he has a favorable boxing style that's very clean and crisp. Oh, spinning back fist. And then Jesse... Jesse, he's more technical, but he's almost like more kickboxing, more Muay Thai style. And he's a little more unpredictable. And, you know, I think that might have been what was a little challenging for Danny last time is the range is just slightly beyond what his boxing is used to. And Jesse yeah. was able to get working with the kicks and really establish his range. Yeah. Wow, there was a good low kick from Martinez right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got to say, Ooh. this is the seventh Southpaw versus Orthodox matchup of the evening, which is... Maybe the highest number I've seen on the card. So <laughs> watch for the open stance weapons, the rear hand, big kicks to the body from the rear leg. Yeah. See, what well, I'm going to be very curious to see if Danny executes, because if you notice, Jesse's right hand is currently just a little low. With it being the stance that is right now, Danny, he may want to try to secure a head kick. And see, we've seen both Martinez, uh, Martinez's. They are landing on each other. This is a 50-50 fight, that's for sure. Oh, good overhand. Oh, Danny. There. Oh, Jesse big jab. Pops his head back with a jab. 
So we see a few times Danny, he, he wants to get that spinning back fist. Well, the interesting thing about him, you see guys throw the spinning back fist intentionally, but he almost uses it. If he misses his lead hand, he will spin it into the back fist, using it as a, as a tool to keep his defense positioning. It's interesting because even in the last fight we saw Yuki Wang go to the spinning back fist a lot, but there was no setup. There was nothing coming before it. But if you watch um, Danny, he will throw something and then finish with the spinning back fist, which makes it a safer and more effective weapon, in my opinion. Absolutely. And you know what? Give me a little flashback of our former super lightweight champion, Bryce McDaniel, when he fought Shamshid Eskandarian for the vacant title. He threw a left hand, he missed, and he saw the opportunity just to swing for the spinning back fist. And we've seen it as a reoccurring phenomenon that actually has some pretty strong potential. Absolutely, yeah. So this is a weapon that could be used. Let's see if he finds a way to land that spinning back this year in round number two. Absolutely, absolutely. This is going to be a very exciting round. We are just about underway for round number two. Jesse versus Danny Martinez. Here we go. Razor tight first round. I mm. honestly don't know how to call it myself, and I'll hate to be a judge in a fight like this. Absolutely. That first round, I will be content with either or winning it because it was that close. It was that competitive. Oh, you saw he went for the spinning back fist there. But once again, he threw his his two and then spun into the punch as opposed to just throwing it naked. Yeah. See, and when I was talking to Jesse, he told me at this time around he felt a lot more happier, more calm, more peaceful. Because in that first fight, he he had just lost a loved one just a week before, so he carried a lot of pressure. So I'm really excited to see Jesse just having a smile on his face and enjoying himself. Well, I'll tell you what, Jesse looks a lot tighter this time around. You know, obviously, he looked great last time out, got mm -hmm. it done, but you could just tell there's a little bit more um, technique behind the strikes this time mm -hmm. around. And he's putting his combinations great. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Jesse landing some big shots. Oh, he's, he's got Danny against the now. corner. Looking to leave, no doubt. And small break from the referee. Gotta love seeing the sportsmanship. Jesse stalking his prey. And you know, Danny spoke about the volume, and I gotta say, I would like to see a little bit more volume from him in this round. Yeah. He's starting to fall into the trend of hunting for the big single shots like the spinning back fist. But in reality, I think putting his boxing together, working in double, one, mm -hmm. two jabs, right hand will really benefit him over this mm -hmm. fight. Yeah. yeah. And I think, too, we're seeing a little bit of a cardio take because Danny, he's definitely slowed down. Like you said, he's, he's picking more of his shots. He's being more selective. He's not trying to add as much volume. So this is going to be a critical round for cardio. Well, something I spoke about last fight, is the big those big movements the spinning back fist take a lot of energy it and does even if you land them even if they're and that's effective the end of round number two sapping your gas tank over time so you know quick jesse's for all coaches and fighters really will take really it looking for this another good combination after resetting and then building so his one offense more fight after this will be taking throwing big strikes out there mm -hmm. the yeah evening. absolutely i mean right now going into the third round you could either you could argue it's either one to one danny and jesse or it's two to zero jesse's favor this, the second round definitely was more in Jesse's favor because he started game momentum and Danny started to slow down. So in this third round, I think this is going to be a very decisive moment for Danny. He needs to make this explicit. He needs to be ferocious. He has to step up the game. He has to secure it in this last round. I would like to make a little call back to our second fight of the night. Uh, Jace Johnson, with his very boxing, pressure-heavy style, putting his head in the guy's chest and just going to the body, I think, with... Martinez, Danny Martinez is striking style. That would be a very effective, you know, strategy for him this third round. Absolutely, absolutely. Put more pressure because right now, if I was Jesse, I would still be weary, but I have a bit more confidence going to this third round. There we go. Mm -hmm. Danny putting some offense out there early. Mm -hmm. you know, more feints from Danny as well would do him. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a beautiful him. job. You know, I feel like he, uh, every time he enters, Jesse's just ready defensively. And if he, you know, oh, and he lands the spinning hook kick just barely, but he did get it up there. Oh, beautiful hook. See, now oh. this is the pace from Danny. We needed to see the last two rounds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you saw him go for that spinning back fist again. Must have heard from his corner in between rounds. He's got to go. Yeah. 
to, oh, Jesse landed with a beautiful counter. Nice. And you know, even though it could be one to one right now, you've got to think his corner is telling him he's down two rounds to none because he's got to hunt for that finish. Mm -hmm. You can't let your fighter think, oh, maybe, you know, I have a round to play with because, you know, it's such short rounds, especially two minutes. You've mm -hmm. got to yeah. go when you have your moment. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, unfortunate low. Accidentally need to go on. Ed West could not join us tonight, but in honor of him, balls. Balls to the wall. Yeah, balls. <laughs> you got to say it. And uh, once again, shouts to Ed West getting it done in the corner tonight as opposed to the commentary with his fighter, Lexi Hills, getting it done by TKO earlier. We have a small break in the action here. Danny Martinez readjusting, making sure everything's uh, all in place and still there. Mm hmm I won't lie though, sometimes when we see these these nut shots happen and they do the little chicken dance afterwards, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yes, out of context, very silly little motion. As soon as you understand the pain, you very much understand yes. it though. Yes, yes. And by, by making that statement, I do not give anybody else incentive to let me experience yeah. the pain. <laughs> we are back underway here. Jesse Martinez versus Danny Martinez in the third round where Danny is looking to make up some ground here. Yep. Good uppercut Ooh. there from Jesse. See, if I'm Jesse right now, my main point is to secure, to keep the pressure. Oh, Lenny's a big shot. The nose of Danny Martinez here. See, even though Danny's taking more shots, I'm liking this aggression because this is what he needed to do. He needs to get dirty. He needs to get more aggressive. Absolutely. Move forward. Push the issue. Good counter hook Ooh. there. Ooh, they both landed there. Once again, look, watching Danny fight, this is not a fighter who seems one in three in his career. The combinations, and he is putting a stamp on this final round. Tremendous finish here from Danny Martinez, and he oh. gets the final shot in. What a fight. As predicted, another banger from these two fellas. Second Absolutely. time around. And frankly, I don't know if it's more clear than the last one. This was once again a very, very, very tight fight. fight. Yep. See, I want to be the, the Davidson figure right oh, Brandon Moreno of PFA. Just keep running it back time yep. and time again. Exactly, until it's definitive. Yes. Yeah. See, now well, at the end, we saw we saw Danny start to pick it up more and he started connecting more. I feel like he she should have done that a lot earlier. He would have had a lot more success. Because it just seemed like from the get-go, if Danny put a lot more grit and a lot more dirty boxing to it, he'd be able to execute a lot more. But Jesse, uh, again, his reach is flawless. It goes back to what he was speaking about yesterday himself. Volume was the key to this fight, and we saw in those times when he was putting the volume out there, he was winning the exchanges and the overall fight. It was just the gaps in between where Jesse was able to get off his own offense mm -hmm. may have been too much to make up on the scorecards because mm -hmm. once again, two minute rounds go so fast and when you have such a limited time to get the action done mm -hmm. one, two, three exchanges can dictate the entire round. So Absolutely. And you know fight. what? Because I like how you say that Danny's record is deceptive. Whether or not this fight goes his way or not, Danny is a dog and he is a phenomenal Ladies fighter. He's only fighting top competition. Judge number one scored the bout 28 to 29. Judge number two scored it 27 to 30. And judge number three scored it 29 to 28. For your winner, out of the blue corner, Jesse Martinez. And Jesse Martinez. Yep, we got Jesse Martinez came in with the very, I could tell he was very happy. You know, this is major credit to both of these fighters. And Jesse, I could tell he's happy about this. Yes. It, this helped them put more of a solidification to this. And again, he looked very improved despite winning last time. 